Yeah, welcome everybody to the presentation of the new book by Mario Pfeiffer. Now we are back live. The artist talk was recorded and we also switching from the German language to English. So thanks for joining us. And we have an exciting uh, round of people here that participated in the production of the book and they are virtually meeting. They are from Canada and uh, Germany. At least we have one compensation for that we cannot meet in real space. My name is Marcel Julien. I'm the co-director of the Drus House for Media Art in Oldenburg together with Edith Molnar and we are hosting the actual uh, solo show of Mario. And now I would like to introduce the speaker of this presentation. I start with Noma Duma Rosa Mazilela. She's an artist, writer and curator currently based in Berlin. She holds a master in art history and philosophy for Columbia University. And her re research focuses on collective and performance art practice in Dhaka. And her writing and curatorial practice have generally worked in service of critically supporting the work of queer and femme identifying artists from the global south and its diasporas. Her curatorial practice includes exhibition and project at the Rijks Academy in Amsterdam, the Museum of Modern Art, and the Kitchen, both in New York, and contributions as a co curator to the 10th Berlin Biennial. Georg Imdahl is a freelance art critic living in Düsseldorf and he's professor for art and public space at the University of Fine Arts in Münster. He works primarily for leading German publications like Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, Deutschlandfunk and Texte zur Kunst, to name a few. His most recent book is about Santiago Sierra and the historicity of contemporary art. Markus Weisbeck is a graphic designer based in Frankfurt am Main, where he funded his studio in 2000. He worked for institutions like MMK Frankfurt, the Foresight Company, Sumtobel, the Städel Schule, the German Pavilion of the Venice Biennial, Manifesto 7, German Design Award, Sternberg Press. And he made more than 100 books for artists and institutions, including five monographs of Mario Pfeiffer. He's also professor for graphic design at the Bauhaus University in Weimar. Mario Pfeiffer is an artist who works mostly with film and video and installations based on collaborative practice. And his project stems from rather specific socio-political situations. Solo exhibitions including Falkmore Museum in Essen, the power plant in Toronto, Pylon Lab in Dresden, Kunstsammlung Chemnitz, GFZK Leipzig, Akut Berlin, Photomuseum Winterthur, Ludley 38 in New York. Of course, he was also in various group shows, most notably the 10th Berlin Biennial. Mario was the holder of the media art grant of the Stiftung Niedersachsen at the Edith Roos House, and he proposed a new project under the title Cell, of Cell 5, 800 degrees Celsius, which investigates one of the most controversial cases in recent German judicial history. It's the case of Uri Yalo, an asylum seeker from Sierra Leone who in 2005 burned to death in detention cell five at the dessau Roslau police station while under custody. Guy Werner, who will moderate this talk, is an art historian and the director of the Power Plant Contemporary Art Gallery in Toronto. And before she was the executive director and the chief curator of the Musée d'Art de Joliette, she served as curator for the former art gallery at Bishop's University while teaching also there and at the Université du Québec à Montréal. And in 2017, Werner was named Chevalier de l'Ordre des Arts et des Lettres Order of Arts and Letters by the French government. So these are our speakers. Thank you so much for joining us. We are really looking forward. Two practical notes. We consider the whole presentation to be around one hour. And after the presentation, you can ask questions also during the presentation. Please use the chat for this. We will note all this and then answer on this. And now I'm happy to um, hand over to you, Gerten. Thank you so much, uh, Marcel. So um, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I come to you virtually from the shores of Lake Ontario in Toronto, Canada. Hence, before we start, please join me in acknowledging the history, culture, and stewardship of the land of this region's Indigenous people, most recently the Mississaugas of the New Credit, a Mississauga Ojibwe First Nation. We seek to leave, live in respect, peace, and right relations with them as we live and work upon their traditional territory. 
So first, I would like to thank Marcel and his uh, entire team, as well as Mario Pfeiffer, uh, and our uh, guests for this wonderful invitation to share with you this momentous book, this monograph that we all contributed to produce and finish during this global pandemic that is affecting us all differently, yet still presenting daily challenges to all of us. So I would like to start by introducing um, the, uh, the exhibition. And this is an exhibition that was supported by the Goethe Institute in, uh, in Toronto, and also uh, by Elisa Neuton and David Dime, uh, donors to the institution, as well as Canada Council, uh, Ontario Arts Council, and um, Toronto Arts Council. So, um, the exhibition that gave way to this monograph. And um, I would like to just introduce the exhibition and the context in which the exhibition took place. And then we can dive into the book. And um, that, and for me, the, the book represents another space of exhibition and a space of exhibition that will live on in a very different way from the physical exhibition. So for those of you who might not know, the power plant is a non-collecting museum as such, exhibiting exhibition making, publication and symposia are at the core of our work. So in summer 2019, we exhibited the work of Mario Pfeiffer as part of our summer 2019 exhibition program. The other artists who were showcased during the season were Johanna Haji Thomas and Khalil Jorej with an exhibition titled On Scams. And we also presented the work of British sculptor Thomas J. Price titled Ordinary Men. And um, thirdly, Mario's exhibition titled If You End Up With The Story You Started With, Then You're Not Listening Along The Way. So the title came from a quote in an article in the Toronto Star uh, that Mario and I thought would be fitting for this trilogy of video installation and that Mario read during his first visit to Toronto a year or so prior to the um, exhibition. So he came for a site visit and in, in um, you know, being embedded within our community and the current event, he read this article and this was an excerpt from this really great uh, article about a photographer who had passed away. So this exhibition was his first solo exhibition in Canada and the three works that were presented were Blacktivist from 2015, um, informed from his work with the Brooklyn-based rap group, The Flatbush Zombies, as well as the work titled Approximation in the Digital Age to a Humanity Condemned to Disappear, which is a work from 2014, informed from his four months with the Yagan people in Tierra del Fuego, Chile. And lastly, again, a 2018 work informed by a fait divers taking place in his home country of Germany. Each of the works center on narrative often forced out of our frame of vision. In each work, Pfeiffer demonstrates his commitment to the stories of the individuals and the communities that he brings to our broader attention. I'm always particularly interested in the manner in which he immerses himself within the communities, taking the time and the necessary dedication to his projects in order to build trust and community in order to create the work that will unfold after the many months of engagement. So today we're here to, to talk about the other iteration of the exhibition, which is the book. Uh, it's a 256 page book that has been thought of as another space of exhibition. And uh, on that is very different from the physical space of the gallery. And um, it's in no way replaces the exhibition but it is one that provides another approach to engaging with the works and encompasses texts by Georg Himmendahl, a conversation between the artist uh, Mario Pfeiffer and Canadian artist Stan Douglas, a text by Noma Duma Rosa Mazelier. And this new space is then conceptualized through the work of the graphic designer Marcus Weisbeck. And uh, today we're really lucky to have um, this time to speak to the different protagonists of the book. So the book 
I mean, I imagine not many of us have had the, the joy of holding the book. I have it. And it's a full color. It presents images of the installation at the power plant. It also uh, integrates the script of the most recent work again, and also documents other works of the artist, and also expands the work again by highlighting some of the testimonial of the protagonists in this uh, video work. The book is generous in its size. It's printed in Germany by DZA Altenberg and distribu distributed by Moose Publishing. It goes without saying that this book is very much a team effort and we, it could not have been produced um, uh, without this team effort. And I could not be prouder and happier with the final result. It is both an imposing book, but it is also thoughtful and expands the scope of the exhibition and the sustain, sustains our engagement with the work of the artists. So we will begin now with, I will invite uh, Marcus to join us. Hi, I'm here. Hi, hi Marcus, hi. so nice to meet you uh, face to face, at least virtually after holding, you know, um, what I always see as a part of the graphic designer. And I would very much like um, to, for us to speak about, you know, um, uh, um, Marcel in introducing you was talking about the fact that this is, you know, this is not your first book that you've produced with Mario Pfeiffer. And I would like to ask you, like, how did you uh, approach um, uh, this project? And the reason behind my question is because I, I think that too often people do not necessarily understand the work of a graphic designer, the work that they bring to a publication and um, can you broadly speak of, you know, how you approach this project and how you decided to develop this book particularly? Um, <clears throat> so in, in this book, we're starting um, inside to other books, more a kind of structuring project and the main focus on the organization with the several chapters and information. And um, we worked here um, more as architects and typesetters in a way for this publication because it's more about organization organization and uh, from the graphical viewpoint it's um, it's important to have um, a kind of strong elements who are but not, not too loud to uh, weaving these kind of chapters together and um, and these elements we are mostly using um, thin lines and a kind of strict grid and um, to, to bring these kind of completely different time um, artworks, Mario, we have decided to have these books together. And, um, and this result is also, I must say, a kind of um, more than 10 years collaboration that um, as a graphic designer speaking, it's um, Designing a book is, uh, with an article is mostly about weaving. So weaving means that we have different contents and different skills. And, um, and these came together in a, in a publication. And, um, and, and luckily that, um, that when the content and together with the artists and the skills of the, and the, the information and the content of the graphic designers so of my person, the designer, uh, bring something together that you didn't expect before. And this is a kind of, very kind of um, important process, what you only have in good collaborations, because you can't do this uh, as a designer on your own. You need another person um, who came also with ideas about this weaving um, thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I've done many books and I must say that, that it's so, the fact that you and Mario had this long standing relationship really came true because m myself as an editor, Mario and I discussed the content. We discussed, you know, what, you know, images and certain general things. But I must say in this case, you, the two of you worked together. And then Mario, when Mario sent me the, the, the first PDF, I was, you know, blown away about how, like, I practically had nothing to say. It was like, wow, this is like, it, uh, what I really appreciate is how you treated the different elements because integrating, let, let's say, the script of the book, which is like a lot of text, 
um, was, you know, could be very tedious in terms of how you present it. And um, I must say that that one sees the trust that was built between uh, the two of you, and um, and I, I was wondering how do you how do you balance you know your ideas that you have you know initially when somebody approaches you for a book, somebody that might not be Mario when they approach you for a book, how do you balance your own ideas when you look at the 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 material, and then. Um, without overpowering the artwork, because sometimes I find some graphic designers are very heavy handed. And then instead of looking at an artwork, especially when we're thinking at an artwork, it feels like it's more, uh, you know, a graphic designer flexing their muscles, showing us what they can do without, you know, having an attention to what is their role and how, so how do you balance this? So, uh, <clears throat> Mara and me, we have, um, as, as I told before, we are a kind of um, long collaboration team. And uh, when we produce uh, a formal film in nine episodes, prologue and epilogue uh, publication in Mumbai, for example, there we were completely clear that we want to work completely on a conceptual approach. Uh, following kind of different kind of printing techniques in India. So we had the opportunity to travel several times to the country to um, and visit to Mumbai and have a lot of support from different kind of printers. And uh, and all in this publication and also in our publication we are talking about now is, is, is the, the process of, let us say, reproduction techniques, um, paper change, etc., individuality, of different kind of um, books, much more uh, important than muscle playing for designers. So, uh, and this is also the reason. So, so mostly, if you know my project, we are working with one or two typefaces. We are not we are not keen on 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 using kind of um, expressive uh, uh, editorial design, etc. This is not this is not really our our style or my kind of concept. So mostly is to to uh, as I told before, it's it's about uh, the art of of weaving things together, and also that you have um, and and the third person are much more uh, much more important than me as a designer or Mario as an artist because the book is now in the world, and uh, and the people must uh, must must uh, must read the book must when fine with the book must like it etc and also there's a lot of content in it that would make no sense from the artistic way make no sense to make the muscle play and also from the graphic designer aspect so we are in the kind of uh, need of let us say editorial design who got on not got on your nerves not as too loud etc could be readable with all those aspects etc and this we are following most or less uh, every publication we made together. Okay. And then my last question to you, I mean, the other thing I must uh, tell the audience is the book is English and, and German. And so, um, and I really uh, enjoy the way you, you, you kind of treated, like, how do you, you know, I, I live in Canada and in Canada there's always the question of, of, of producing books in both French and English. Which language do you put first? Which do you put second? How do you balance them out so that no one feels left out or undermined? And so what uh, dictated your choices um, within this context? Well, the thing is, um, the only thing that you have in the book is the order. Uh, what you what is not really good on advantage to to change the size of the typeface etc and all these kind of thing you can do this with kind of background color thing you can you can do this with a kind of um, com uh, composition wise um, uh, um, yeah making it a little bit more interesting but you can't but it's not really good to kind of uh, favorize one language at first etc but we know exactly we know exactly when we when we had news publishers on board that is a more international language than a german than a, a publication than a german publication and um, we must uh, we decided this very very soon at the okay. beginning and then my last question for you would be, um, what are your key benchmarks in determining the success of a book? And how do you measure you know, the success in terms of your collaboration with the artist, with the editor, with the publisher, and the final 
product and the printer also. So what makes for you, I mean, is this a successful book, number one? And number two, what are what makes a project for you a successful um, book? Yeah, as I, as I, as I told um, before, this is kind of um, it's all about it's all about uh, an, an, an collaboration with the curators, uh, with the museums, people, etc., and um, with the kind of freedom of the designer and um, and um, and 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 also discussing about not to let in any crazy ideas who come overnight etc so uh, it must be all kind of a kind of well balancing so and um, and because um, th the reason is that that the book is um, is something who's really on the journey 10 or even 20 or more years etc and you can't make any kind of crazy zeitgeist with these kind of ideas that um, that you running out of fashion because you produce designed or printed this books in 2020 and not 2010 and not 2030 etc and this is a kind of very important because books are very kind of um, let us say classic thing you must see the time what is produced but not so overloading that we are hey we are 2020 etc and there are other medias, um, web pages, apps, et cetera, who are better in this, but you must uh, have a completely other sensibility for designing something you can't change anymore. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Marcus. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. So now I will uh, introduce Georg. Are you with us, Georg? Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, hi. Um, so, um, you uh, you are um, an art critic. You're a professor also, and you wrote a text in the book that is titled "A Humanity Condemned to Disappear," and um, your text fo focuses on Mario's interest in societal debates and our democratic consciousness or lack of, uh, and also our withdrawal of society's basic consensus. So, um, what? What was your, um, what first, were you aware of Mario's work? Have you written on it in the past? Uh, no, I think the first time that we met Mario was uh, in Chemnitz. It was uh, on the occasion of an opening of a small show of yours in Chemnitz. And Chemnitz is a city in East Germany where the far right uh, extremists are very strong. Um, there is a party, RFD, alternative for Germany called uh, very ugly people. And uh, I learned to know Mario as an artist who is really interested in what he researches. And when I visited him before writing my text, <clears throat> as I always do when I'm writing a longer text, to visit and listen to the artist, I learned him to know as somebody who is uh, very, very informed about what he's dealing with. Yeah, so he had so many files, source materials, press uh, papers, he collects everything, I think, and uh, he has a specific desire to, uh, to listen to the people he collaborates with. And, uh, well, this is for me interesting too, because I, <clears throat> I see it as a privilege to have open access to the artists, to speak with them to put questions and um, yes I'm always interested in uh, well in the attitude the thinking uh, of an artist every piece of art in my experience has its own uh, story its own uh, development and often you uh, cannot really know it uh, just by recepting the piece uh, often it's uh, very useful to to well to ask perhaps mario you can show this uh, freezer uh, image where uh, shabazz is lying in the freezer um, this is an image where i had discussions with many people 
uh, about <clears throat> before writing the text and before really knowing what it shows or what it should show or what is what its meaning could be um mario perhaps you find this um yeah it's a picture in the freezer that's, yeah and uh, uh i met people who uh, who are interested in mario's work but who said this is pure cynicism <clears throat> and um uh, then <clears throat> um of course we know that this uh um this man, this asylum seeker, has been found frozen in a forest. But uh, what I didn't uh, know, or didn't, or what I heard from Marius, that he always he also thought of an incident in uh, Austria in this time, where seventy-one people from Iran, from Syria, from Afghanistan had been found deadly in a refrigerated truck at a highway. So those are examples for. Uh, uh, the value of talking with artists uh, when you deal with them <clears throat> and well yes this is how we met and uh, i think it's uh, uh, up to now the only text no it's the only text i wrote uh, about mario's work maybe so one maybe one thing to add for our first encounter which was in chemnitz at um, the show at the uh, state art collection and uh, what was quite interesting and quite uh, intense that three uh, the show opened on the day of unification of Germany on the 3rd of October. And uh, a few days before, I think two days before, um, the Secret Service um, captured multiple people of a terrorist cell in, in Chemnitz. Sure. Because in the summer before, they had uh, kind of riots um, because a, um, a Cuban German teenager was uh, stabbed to death by two asylum seekers, potentially. And so within this context, we had a full house at the opening, we had uh, police protection at the opening, and uh, we had quite an engaged discussion with an East German uh, crowd, yeah, even, even the Shoah came up. Um, and uh, I think that was also, I think for you, Georg, the first time you went to Chemnitz, right? Uh, maybe, yeah. 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 But somehow, I mean, we, what, what is negotiated in, in, in the works that were exhibited, that was again, and about education and fear, um, I think we could feel it live mm -hmm. opening that exhibition. So the correlates between reality and what is supposed to be some art that is in a museum behind um, thick walls, that was quite um, um, quite an experience, even for me. Yes. So <clears throat> to add this, I have been very often in the former DDR in the, in the eastern state of uh, Germany, but uh, indeed, it was uh, the first time uh, for me to visit Chemnitz. And uh, you, Mario, you come from that area, from Saxony. So you have a specific feeling for uh, what the people are thinking there. Uh, and this is interesting uh, for your entire work or for, for many works of you too, I would mm -hmm. say. Mm. And so, um, um, Georg, in, in your treatment of, you know, the, um, how did you choose what you wanted to talk about in terms of, you know, um, how do you perceive your role as an art critic, as an art historian, you know, uh, being the bridge between the work of Mario and a text that will live on as written word? And how do you treat this, your approach to writing this text, um, let's say in opposition to uh, uh, you know, writing an article in a specialized magazine? Um, in opposition to writing a text for a publication that is a catalog, a, a monograph? Well, <clears throat> there's a big difference between writing uh, a review mm -hmm. and an essay, I would say, because a review always is related to one exhibition and uh, the field is small then. So you don't have such a broad field what, what, where you have to invent yourself what to deal with. And to be honest, at first, I was really uh, a little confused what to write about because uh, I think Mar Mario's work um, consists of uh, very, very different approaches. And um, well, in terms of a philosophy of contemporary art, as Peter Osborne wrote it, you can say that Mario finds for 
for every subject matter his own language. And this is what I appreciate in his work, but I didn't really get the point what it is about at first. And then uh, uh, I made the remark that uh, we went through uh, for two or three days in Berlin his uh, entire work until now. Um, and uh, then I noticed that uh, the phenomenon of disunion in our uh, civil societies is one subject matter, this, uh, what, what he treats uh, for years already. And um, well, this was my, uh, this was my argumentation then, uh, because Mario in recent years, as you mentioned, um, well, he devoted several works, uh, well, to the, well, to the, in, in a way to the breakdown of our democratic consciousness or to the decline of it. And he does this uh, uh, in, how can I say, from very uh, different angles, yeah. Uh, uh, pop culture, documentary filmmaking, theater, performing, um, very different um, well, approaches to, to what he's interesting in. And, and this is interesting for me as a writer. Uh, this, um, <clears throat> perhaps you can call it inventing his own language for every new piece and um, that Mario is really interested in visual and aesthetic uh, results and solutions. Yeah, it's uh, it's not only on the right standpoint; it's really on what an image can be for this. Yeah, and I think that one thing I would say for having lived with those works for about three to four months mm -hmm. is like those images stay with you for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like the image that you chose of the 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 protagonist in um, the freezer. It's like each time I come upon this image, I'm back in the like I I can see the entire work, you know, in my mind. Um, the same for you know the uh, in approximation whether it is an image of um, the the Yagan people, you know, cutting the head of a of oh a, yes an ox. <laughs> you know, which is very difficult to watch. And, you know, within our prescribed urban uh, way of living, you know, we, for those of us who eat meat, you never see that process, right? Yeah. So it's very shocking, but then it stays with you. But then you look at the landscape or as I said to Mario, I love King Crab, but he's killed it for me forever. Because as I look at his work showing us the processing it's like you really realize how this mass production is emptying the sea, you know, of everything. Yeah. And I can no longer look at this in the same way, um, unfortunately for me. And just to know like this, he was just showing us one month of something mm -hmm. that is going on as we we watch the the the, the those and then his fashion, his way of taking us in different spaces. But there is that light motif of always the human element and active human engagement, whether for good reasons or bad reason, which is always embedded. And then those beautiful landscapes. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. And in Are this in this case, uh, Mario, too, you 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 spend a lot of time there. When I uh, get it right, yeah, several weeks uh, until you yourself. Uh, got an access to these people. Yeah? So uh, this is what I mean when I said you are really interested. Yeah? It's not only that you get an idea and then you think how to realize a picture or film or whatever. Uh, it is really that you, uh, you I think uh, you were still not far from uh, failure in this uh, case. Is it true? I think so. Yes, it took about um, yeah, 10 to 12 weeks that I even would have the chance to talk to somebody. So I thought uh, within this first 12 uh, weeks um, that this was one of the biggest faults in my young career. So I was really close to uh, leaving that island, uh, Tierra del Fogo. Um, and I took, a, I took a two week break in Brazil to visit the Sao Paulo Biennial and to finally get some energy back. And then uh, when I returned, a lot of doors opened. So this persistence um, also, yeah, to, to yeah, wait for the smallest chance uh, in order to, to, to start to communicate. 
Um, I think that project taught me uh, a lot and it was physically very hard, but also socially because I was very isolated living on an island um, by myself. But it um, yeah, it was one of the most intriguing experiences and I'm thankful for that. And um, I think um, this three channel video installation really also gives you these aspects of isolation of, of force of force of nature, but also force of capitalism. Um, it's even for me still interesting to see that I managed to capture these experiences. Yeah, because I was filming myself within the community uh, when they accepted me and somehow there were not many routes to take. I was guided by the community and the project became what they wanted to share with me. Yeah, but then of course there are aesthetic um, choices I take that elaborate and also elevate the project into something that can really live on because we talk about a culture that is 10 to 30,000 years old in a place that is, is very far away um, from the so-called centers of our society. And still uh, the video installation looks very up-to-date. The representation of the place and its people is in a way very modern, yeah? And I think um, I was lucky that a lot of things fall into place, yeah? Um, but on the other hand, um, I'm happy I was persistent, yeah? Because you have to be persistent in the end with each project, it doesn't matter. And uh, because if you're persistent, you can actually get somewhere. So, uh, Georg, um, one last question. What do you want our, the readers to take from your, your text? What's the, you know, how would you summarize your, your contribution to this book in terms of your text and the posture you took in, 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 uh, in speaking of or commenting on Mario's work? Well, uh, to put it short, I would say um, I want to give them uh, an idea of how Mario and that Mario um, dramatizes in his work fundamental questions of our society in the present time. Um, who speaks for society and in the name of the people, the people, we the people, who is this? Um, how are we to view the claim to truth asserted to language and speech? And uh, well, how can a contemporary artist find um, images for this and uh, an, an own narrative on this? Yeah? Working with uh, the Flatbush zombies or uh, asking people from Saxonia or going to Patagonia, these are so many different ways to uh, to get close to contemporary issues of our time. I would say this is, well, this is what contemporary art is in a way. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much. You're welcome, thank you. So now we'll move to Noma Duma. Hello. Hello, <laughs> nice to see you. So you are an artist, a writer and a curator. And you were part of the curators that commissioned the work again for the 10th Berlin Biennale in 2018. And in your essay, you introduced the performance or live presentation of the work again, and its transformation from a video work to a stage or live performance. So um, can you first speak of the commissioning of the work in its initial state within the Berlin uh, Biennale? And, um, and then you can also expand on the reception of the work within the Berlin Biennale. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, first of all, thank you for having me. It was really a pleasure to work um, on this essay and to work with Mario again, and also to see everyone uh, who contributed to it. Um, for the uh, for the tenth Berlin Biennale, which was in two thousand eighteen, which was titled "We Don't Need Another Hero," um, we were a curatorial team of five, and um, we were really our main concerns were um, mainly kind of questioning unyielding um, knowledge systems and uh, normative historical narratives. And, and why we wanted to uh, present work that insisted upon different configurations of knowledge and power um, that enabled contradictions and complications of, of various of um, 
um, subjectivities and subject positions. Um, and which also questioned existing social um, frameworks and constructs. And so Mario's um, project, again, Nohain Mal, which is this um, uh, um, film that we presented, um, really um, was in direct conversation with our, um, with our concerns. And this, um, again, Nohain Mal was a film, um, uh, two screen projection, which, um, address the xenophobic attack of um, a young Kurdish refugee in, um, in East uh, Germany um, in 2016 um, and his eventual death in 2017. And his name was Shabazz Saleh Al-Aziz and Georg um, uh, kind of mentioned this project, but, um, and uh, Mario was really interested in um, is really interested in constantly examining what is how how does how does one become civically engaged or what is the, what is civic engagement within I mean in this case within the context of of Germany um, and its relationship um, and and oftentimes violent relationship with um, uh, uh, kind of uh, migrant populations um, within Germany or immigrant populations as well. And um, and this um, this young man was living in Germany, and um, he was attacked in a grocery store. I mean, there was a, there was a disagreement. He was attacked, and um, a lot of the ways in which um, this attack that was um, five men uh, dragged him out of the supermarket was uh, the, a lot of ways in which the media presented this attack, and in which there was a sort of an anonymous YouTube uh, recording of the attack from within. Um, using an iPhone um, from within the supermarket was that this was an act of civil courage, and um, that sort of, um, and and at the same time there was a lot of like slow response um, to actually um, uh, to uh, addressing sort of mis the mistreatment of um, Shabazz and also. Uh, and the ways in which his eventual death the following year um, was really kind of pushed through like a really kind of Kafkaesque bureaucratic system of um, negligence and of isolation and, um, and um, a bureaucratic abuse essentially. And how this was sort of sanctioned within um, kind of conversations of what it is to, um, uh, uh, within this greater conversation of um, who needs to be protected by institutions, from whom, by whom, to what end. And so all of these questions and, and um, the fact that there was a court case that was um, to examine this attack um, on al-Shabaaz by these five men, um, which was ultimately um, dismissed because it was decided and was dismissed um, upon his, after his death because it decided that since the victim was no longer alive, this case was no longer valid, there was no public interest. And so all of these ways in which it really, the systemic violence within the kind of um, German system was as much um, precipitated his death um, as much as this, the violence that he experienced physically. And, um, and, I, and so Mario's, he framed, um, he uh, um, reenacted, um, parts of this attack with um, uh, uh, this um, young uh, kind of uh, resident of Berlin, um, um, Dylan Mohammed, who is not a trained actor, but who acted both in the film and the live performance that happened um, that Mario staged one year later in 2019 in Amsterdam. Um, but he was really asking questions of, um, uh, how does one um, think of civic engagement within society as a mode of resistance um, to any unquestioning belief in the um, equity of any sort of legal proceedings in the face of all of this information of the injustice? Um, and so I think uh, he restaged this the attack and he sort of presented archival material, including this iPhone um, footage of this person who who filmed the attack. And the media interviews um, that, and the media onslaught celebrating his attackers, and also then organize a jury of um, uh, a jury 
that he organized, since there was no there was no actual court case um, of East German residents um, who are um, of German uh, background and of migrant backgrounds. And he sort of within um, in order to discuss what happened in an, in an attempt to sort of um, examine where where the systems had failed him, where they actively um, endangered him and their own experience within this. And so then he restaged this in Amsterdam and sort of asked the audience to kind of serve as to be given the piecemeal information that is available about the attack, the death, and then the kind of dismissal of this court case. Um, and he asked the audience in Amsterdam to address this, um, to be presented with this information and then to have a discussion around it, um, which was, uh, um, which I think was incredibly um, interesting and generative. Um, but um, I guess in my es in the essay that I wrote, I was interested in sort of the ways in which a number of the people in the audience, um, well, it's a number of things. I think he wanted, he's, uh, Mario has spoken about how he wants to present a story to an audience, to, to a group of people, to an audience, and then have them do with it what they, what they will within opening up the discussion and, um, and to see what happens as a result. And um, so for me also, it was quite interesting to see how a lot of people did pick up on or did speak about sort of this institutional and like um, systematic systemic violence that um, uh, Shabazz faced. Um, but also there was a lot, quite a few comments of um, like still an insistence upon the order of, on legal order and the fact that um, uh, like things will become better. The sort of idea somehow that change or like really big important um, changes within civil rights, et cetera, have not, have, have been historically proven to be ones in which it's been people actively protesting and insisting and really placing themselves in a position of opposition to the state, which is continuing um, certain oppressive and um, behaviors. I think it's quite fitting that we have this meeting today on the anniversary of, um, uh, the shootings in Hanau, which was um, one year ago today, and um, which uh, there are vigils uh, across Germany to be held today for um, the victims of this um, um, uh, terrorist attack. And um, uh, because I think these kinds of discussions need to kind of, and kind of actions need to be constantly maintained and, and we need to remain vigilant. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I answered all of your questions. Yeah, yeah, but one one of the thing is, you know, it's interesting to to see his his work like now, and it mm -hmm. was it was created, you know, it was premiere in 2018, and now we're in 2021, and Lord knows everything that's come before us mm -hmm. since then. And um, what was the reception of the work, you know, um, within the context of the the Biennale from norm, you know, everyday visitors? Uh, to to um, I'm not so much interested in what the critical response mm -hmm. like the art world, but what everyday people did you get a sense or the team from the Biennale were you able to get a sense uh, take the pulse of the people that were coming and was it generating? Uh, uh, I can tell you what it created in Toronto, which was quite incredible. Um, and for me as a viewer or from the conversation I had with different people, everybody came out with what would I have done if I was standing there? Mm -hmm. You know, would I have thought that this person is the guilty party? Would I have questioned whether these people should have done that? Would I have phoned the police? Would I have stood in the way? Or would I have been a silent um, uh, a, a silent uh, bystander, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's my question to you. What what did you, it, it's two part. What was the reception in, you know, at the time um, from the visitors at the Berlin Biennale or your your understanding of their perception mm -hmm. and, and how? Um, I mean, yes, I mean, of course it was like big, massive like critical and uh, kind of press response to it. But I think for people, from the visitors that I spoke with and 
And also later in speaking about the biennial, you know, years later as well, I think people, um, I think what was uh, um, amazing or what was the strength of the work was really that people sat, would, you know, could kind of like walk through a space, but would really sit and watch the entirety of um, mm. this two of this um, film of the two screen projection, which was I'm trying to remember now what how mm, uh, 20, 23 minutes mm -hmm. um, and um, also came out with um, uh, yeah, I think it raises a lot of questions of what yeah, what one's role is and how one positions oneself and what is actually, you know, because of course the men who attacked him were presented as these courageous, what is this, a neighborhood watch or something as these protectors. And, um, and you know, what does one do in response to this? But also not only when one is present um, in the supermarket because, you know, but also, what does one do afterwards? What kind of pressure does one place on um, the, um, as a, um, especially as, as an unthreatened kind of uh, citizen of a country, um, what kind of pressure does one place on the systems that are really um, oppressive and um, to, to, you know, your fellow countrymen or fellow uh, neighbors and et cetera. Um, and I think that really raised, um, I think it, it, in a similar way as in Toronto, it raised a lot of um, questions. And the, and the thing is, is that I think in a way sometimes, um, uh, I mean, it was interesting to see, to have the discussion in Amsterdam about in, for the live performance, um, because I think sometimes it's uh, a bit easier to, or not sometimes, it's easier to talk about another place's problems rather than one's own, like these issues, are not somehow, I mean, maybe specific, they are, they present themselves in very specific ways, but they aren't, they don't exist purely in Germany. You know, in the Netherlands, there's a lot of anti-migrant um, uh, uh, feeling sentiments. And, um, you know, I mean, also in the, um, uh, here in Germany, when there was um, sort of, uh, this uh, there were many protests also um, in um, yeah, in support of the Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter movement in the U.S. and and kind of in it across across the world, and in in response to the death to the murder of George Floyd, and but at the same time it's much harder to have a conversation or to sort of about I mean the fact that Uri Jalo's death is still un un sort of um, deemed as, an, as uh, not an active death or precipitated by state violence. Um, and from 2005, you know, these are kinds of ongoing uh, conversations that are much harder to have in one's own home. And I think that's something that Mario keeps pushing. I mean, this um, in his future projects and, and also now. Um, yeah, and I think this kind of, a desire for there to be, um, you know, in the audience responses, there were, um, uh, I think even within the structure of the theater, I think Mario was kind of trying to create a space in which maybe someone could interject. The moderators kind of were asking questions into the audience, but there was a sort of, um, I don't know, understand uh, or a sort of uh, behavior based on the situation that one was in. In a theater, you don't speak out. In a mm -hmm. supermarket, when something is happening, you don't react. You know, so kind of, I think it really pushes like the live performance and also the film really pushed up how does one actually engage and what is the point at which one feels, you know, to really think about beforehand as well about what one's own political position is. And, um, and and become engaged as a result. Yeah, I think I I um when I when I come as a curator as a director to choose works of art, 
I always think that, you know, maybe it's a kumbaya well wishing, well wished that I hope that the works of art that we choose to present within our space actually change our visitors in, in their everyday as citizens, right? And I would hope that after seeing such a work and staying with it, the next time you're in a situation, and I'm not asking people to throw themselves <laughs> in the situation, but that you think of what is your impact or what, what should you stay and you know, should you be part of a campaign? Should you go march? Should you support others who will do the work for you? But you, we can no longer stay silent because if you stay silent, that means you're not condoning, you know, you're part of the problem also. And I really believe that, you know, um, art galleries through the voices of artists have to be this catalyst for change or else, you know, nothing is going to, to ever move forward. And I think that, what and um, so thank you so much for being within the book, being that voice that uh, bridges the vi video work into the performative uh, work. And I would um, I would ask Mario to come and 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 uh, I mean you've been there, but join us in the conversation. And I want to get back to to what uh, Nomaduma was saying in terms of the work again. And um, if you can speak on what was your interest in moving it from, you know, a film, a work in a film festival, an experience, a live experience, an exhibition within, you know, whether it's the power plant or the commissioning at uh, the um, at the Biennale, and then TV broadcasts in 2021. How do all of these modes of of expanding your work of art fit within your mind as an artist project? Yeah, well, thank you uh, to all of you for, for joining, having these great contributions again. Um, for me as an artist, audience plays quite an important role. So um, mainly I work of course in the exhibition space. Um, so I care about how does uh, an institutional space work for my work? How, what is, how can I present uh, my message? How can I present a structure, a strategy, uh, to confront basically an audience with, with my findings, with the uh, story I develop. Uh, so the audience plays a, a major role in, in my artistic production. And uh, I'm also, since maybe 2015, after I lived isolated on that island in Chile, I thought about, is there another art audience than the art audience? And that led me to collaborate with rappers, with the Flatbush Zombies, because I thought Black Lives Matter, the killing of er Eric Garner, is such a big message that needs to be transported within the institution, but it needs to be louder than that because it's a bigger problem than the museum can handle. <laughs> so bringing an installation also to YouTube uh, and, and uh, receiving more than 3 million clicks is, is a huge uh, success, but it also means that you are able to confront an even larger audience. Yeah, For again, it was <clears throat> interesting that I pitched it to a European TV channel in order to, again, have access to a larger audience because in a way I'm frustrated with TV culture. I'm frustrated with what I see on TV. And I think it needs more radical, more engaging films to be presented in TV in order to change the viewer's behavior. Because if we want to change uh, how our society works, how, how justice is failing, then I want to have a contribution as an artist. And the only way to achieve that is by producing art that can maybe extend the walls of the museum to a larger audience. Yeah. We presented it at film festivals and then I got invited to stage uh, the reenactment film again, which is quite theatrical in a theater in Amsterdam. It was, it was a wonderful festival, ITVA. Um, and I, of course, agreed to do that because we got all the, the elements, but transforming it from a German context into a Dutch context meant again, to, to grasp on a new audience, to make the project flexible enough so it can be adapted to another country's uh, agenda situation yeah, so that the audience can identify with it. So it's also about um, making the audience identify with the destiny of Shabbos. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So I need to restructure the piece here and there so it speaks to a wider audience. We are also planning to bring the project to Kurdistan. Mm -hmm. So that will be a completely different audience and setting because this is where Shabbos escaped from. So if I have the chance to modify my project with very simple steps, mainly casting, um, maybe, maybe the translation of a script, um, 
but posing the same question because it's an essential question for our society. How do I act with civil courage? How do I get engaged? How can I help? How can I de-escalate a situation? That is basically what many works of mine are about. How can I give a little contribution to communication? And I need to be smart about how I, <laughs> you know, construct my, my works of art. So they speak in order to be listened, but then comes the interesting part, how people live on with these works. Yeah? And that's why our exhibition title is so, so uh, on the point. I expect from myself to give the audience the, the chance to visit an exhibition, to visit a cinema, to watch TV, to go to the theater, to read our book and to change fundamentally for a tiny bit. If we can reach that, that's a great contribution. That's how I walk into a museum. That's how I uh, switch on my TV. That's how I go to a theater. And that's how I read a book. I want to learn something that I don't know. Yeah. So this is kind of what I'm trying to do. And I need great partners who allow me that. The Berlin Biennial was a wonderful partner. You were a wonderful partner. Moose Publishing is a wonderful partner. The Edit Roos House is a wonderful partner. Um, we need to address and put out questions without fear. We need to research them well, but we also need an engaged audience. So we need to give them certain tools so that they cannot escape, I would say. I would have not let the audience escape from the theater if they wouldn't have responded. They knew the lights went on, they need to talk. And some of them did, the majority didn't, but they still listened. Yeah? yeah. So it's really about this exchange and touching base and so performative works of other strategies than, than video works, for example. Yeah, because uh, in, in a museum setting, a visitor can come, sit, listen, and then leave. But when you're in a theater or in the play um, and you create this, this opportunity for them to possibly, you know, exchange and, 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 um, and speak um, when confronted with the words and the actors and also their physical, the physical reaction to the bodies of the, the actors within the space. So there's less dis distance than in the, in the video. Um, I think it's really, I mean, I think it, I would love to be part of seeing the iteration of again, as like a, a play. And I, as you were speaking, I see his figure as, you know, a complete, uh, a tragic uh, um, a character. Uh, it's really a, tra a human tragedy that is sadly, you know, repeating itself in different iterations, but that can be told from, you know, the US to Germany to, to all over the world, you know, in Canada also, everybody has these different iterations of these acts and you could even transpose it into an opera if one would want to stretch it to that way. Yeah, and also if you think about um, the dimension of art, it, it, it's really meant, and that's what Georg and, and Marcus said, it's for infinity in a way, if it's, if it's stable, if it's functioning. Then um, the work again uh, has really managed to give Shabazz um, a, a place in history, a, a mm -hmm. sad and tragic place, but still we acknowledge his existence. And there are all too many uh, destinies that we won't remember. Yeah, mm -hmm. so art has also, in my perspective, um, the role to document a certain moment in time of our society and to attach questions to it that will potentially for a longer time we have to ask and find answers to these questions. Yeah, mm -hmm. So bringing also the performance and the film to Kurdistan will be a big event, I imagine. Yeah, mm -hmm. And it will be an important event. Not, not so much because of me, more of Shabazz. Shabazz, yeah. And now also context contextualizing his story from exactly. their perspective exactly. of also understanding what their own people have to go through when they leave what is already seemingly a very challenging way, you know, a social political uh, condition. So it's as if giving them a window into this other part of this, you know, the immigrant experience from their perspective. Exactly. One question I wanted to ask you to wrap up is really, you know, what does, um, you know, making books is really important in your practice. Um, and I want you to tell me a bit about, you know, um, what does it mean um, as a potentially as a way to, um, uh, to address the importance of written text and of book 
and images and monograph, you know, within your work as an artist? Where do you position it in comparison to, you know, just exhibitions, um, producing works? Where does the monograph, the bookmaking, and that relationship with uh, authors, curators, and graphic designer, how does that all fit in together? Yeah, first of all, I think um, since this is the fifth monograph, um, that working with time-based media, um, I always need a place and a quite a lot of equipment to make my work visible. It doesn't really function on a computer screen only. You can, you can see that, I see that more as a documentation, but um, the book gives it a visibility and a physical visibility that the work itself doesn't really have. So that's the first thing. So it's a way to document um, a setting in which the work speaks best. The collaboration with writers or other artists for interviews or with a designer means to yeah, give the work a certain framework, but also to let writers contribute of what they see, to ex have them experience the piece and share their knowledge and, and thoughts. So often I'm, I'm very surprised um, about the essays that are produced because I learn a lot myself. So I always take this as an indication of a fruitful collaboration for, for readers. Um, of course, it's also quite privileged to be able to be part of monographic productions, um, but I take it very serious. I think this is in the end, something that will always point to the work. So it's, a, it's an entry field. So we also produce records with soundtracks yeah, where you enter through the music into the work of art. Yeah, with the book, you you basically have somebody who's interested in art books finding the work. Yeah, it's also about tracing the work, mm -hmm. and um, I try to always gather writers that I feel interested in myself in their uh, societal contribution, um, and in conversations, of course, with Stan Douglas. It was also amazing to share thoughts about from 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 different angles, from different generations on how we look at society and how we, do we look at the role of art within society. So in the end, a work in itself can hardly exist. You need an audience and then you need reflection. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm lucky and I'm happy that we were able to make this book under your guidance. And um, I'm a book lover. So in a, in a way, I trust that the book is still one of the best mediums to conserve knowledge and art <laughs> and it's no, very accessible through libraries and you know it's much more accessible than uh, collecting a book than collecting a work of art yes i think that that um um as i mentioned to you um you know i i would say before this book i was always so much more interested in hardcover books and then when i held your book in my hands i was like okay Maybe now I've moved to the other side of the soft cover book. So you sold me on that. And because it holds really nicely and because there's so much text in it, one could hold it, read it, and it's, 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 really, uh, it's really flexible. And I think each time I look at this book and the choices that were made, whether from the authors to the images to putting the floor plan of the gallery, you know, you constant, we constantly trans, um, you know, uh, opened up to the reader, their understanding of the project that we were doing in terms of the relationship curatorial and uh, an exhibition, and then having the documentation and then the author's words to support this entire endeavor. And I think it really positions it as like, uh, for me, another type of exhibition that lives on, you know, so, um, um, I don't know if there are any, if there are any uh, questions. And um, I mean, I want to thank everyone, um, the authors, the graphic designer, and everyone who, who is with us today who took part. And I will turn it over back to uh, Marcel to, um, I guess, end or continue. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't you worry, we won't continue. Um... <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, thank you, especially Gatan, for hosting this event um, as a moderator. And it was really interesting. And um, I want also to thank the audience for staying with us. It um, was going on for quite a while, the artist talk and the book. And I know that several followed both. 
the book presentation. Is there any question still? So it's now the last chance to ask. You can do it via the microphone or via chat. And if not, I would like to thank everybody. Please come to Oldenburg and visit the show if we can open it corona-wise. Please buy the book. And um, yeah, hope to see you soon one day in real life.